Day 32 Feelings versus Thoughts You feel what you think. Hello, welcome to Dumi's Daily Grind. Thank you for joining me today. How are you doing? To those who keep returning, I would like to say thank you so much for your support and your contribution. It really keeps me going and be self-accountable daily. Doing this alone is not easy. It becomes easier when there are others in the picture that can encourage me to keep going. To those that have just started listening, welcome. And I hope you're also doing well today and join us again in the future. This program is available on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify and Audible so you can tune in via your favorite app. This episode is based on an exercise I received from my psychologist during a time of immense emotional distress that I was experiencing at the time. I find myself every once in a while still having to deal with normal life situations that cause immense emotional distress And I have to remind myself to apply this exercise in changing my automatic negative thoughts. We usually believe that feelings and emotions we experience are determined by external events, situations, occurrences and behaviors of others. We try to answer questions related to our feelings by referring to what happens external to ourselves and are quick to blame other people, things or situations for making us angry, happy, sad, excited, relaxed and faithful. Meaning, we believe that they influence or determine the feelings we experience. We tend to automatically link these feelings without stopping and analyzing the actual process that makes that link and not notice the step or the process that lies in between the event itself and the conclusions that we make. This process is how our thoughts directly influence our feelings. Our perception is very powerful. It directly links another's actions, speech, behaviors and deeds to how we respond and feel about it and not the other way around. Our perception influences our thoughts and beliefs about what happened to us and thereby influencing our actions. There are many instances I can make examples of that things will happen and I would make different conclusions on based on my thoughts and beliefs at the time. But I am often not aware of my thoughts and beliefs because they have become so automatic and happen so quickly. This is where I need to realize it because those beliefs affect the way I feel at the end of it. One of those examples would be as follows. My partner woke up this morning and did not say good morning in his usual way. I make him a cup of coffee while I make mine as I always do and he seems a bit off. How do I feel about that? Immediately I start feeling upset, unloved and not enough for him. I would continue feeling like I'm not such a good partner and start questioning my role in our household and the significance of my role. Instead, I could be thinking He is probably tired, didn't get enough rest, or perhaps is just in a bad mood, or maybe he is a bit nervous about the meeting that may be happening that morning, right? Any of these may be a possibility toward his actions and may have absolutely nothing to do with me. But because of my automatic processes, I don't even realize there may be other possibilities for his actions or his current mood. There is really a difference between feelings and thoughts, and these differences are as follows. 
A feeling is quite difficult to explain for some of us and can be difficult to put into words. However, it is important to understand the differences as we begin this journey and the connection between feelings and the thoughts. Words such as tense, panicky, calm, happy, annoyed, anxious, and depressed are words that can be used to describe our feelings. On the other hand, thinking is not the same and can be very much automatic and we might not even be conscious of it. Our brains are constantly throwing out thoughts very quickly and unconsciously and some of our thinking is so habitual that it is automatic. The things we do on a daily basis that we do not even have a thought about, such as driving, showering, brushing our teeth, etc. We do these unconsciously so often that we do not even realize that these are thoughts that the brain is actually turning over. These thoughts happen unconsciously and automatically. And these automatic thoughts play a vital role in our emotional well-being. There are basically three kinds of automatic thoughts. Neutral thoughts, positive thoughts, and negative thoughts. And they often reflect our worries and concerns, but can be about literally anything we have ever experienced. Negative automatic thoughts are the ones that cause us more pain though. They are the very thing that leads us to emotional distress. But luckily enough, there is a way to change the negative emotional thoughts. Some examples of negative automatic thoughts include, and they happen quite quickly in our minds. Why did I make that mistake? I am so stupid. I will never go anywhere in life. Or, oh my, how could I have relapsed? I have so many tools I have been taught. What is wrong with me? Or, I can't even remember what my lecturer just spoke about. I must be so stupid. Or, Aish, my parent told me so many times about this and I'm still doing it wrong. What an idiot I must be. Or, how about, he is so cold-hearted. I am not able to make him happy anymore. I am not good enough for him. From these examples, we should then be in a position to identify that these conversations that we have with ourselves are unhealthy and contribute towards our bad mood. To fix this, we must firstly distinguish between the differences between feelings and thoughts and understand that feelings are not thoughts as easily as it is to confuse the two and think they are one and the same experience. We can move forward and find a way to separate them. If you think you are not appreciated for what you do, you are actually feeling hurt. Rather than saying you feel unappreciated, you are actually feeling hurt or sad due to the thinking that you are unappreciated. When we start making that distinction, we can then start focusing on controlling our thoughts. So how do we do that? How do we start controlling our thoughts? Well, there are some exercises we can try. Firstly, by being aware of what it is you say to yourself and how that makes you feel, Earlier, I spoke about the words that can describe how we feel versus the thoughts that we have. Anger, hurt, disappointment, concern, irritation, cheerfulness and frustration are feelings. Things we say to ourselves are thoughts and once we change those, we can change how we feel. To improve our emotional being, let us be more aware of what we are thinking and change our thoughts through firstly identifying which ones cause us emotional distress as when we feel distressed it is often because we are thinking very specific thoughts that contribute toward our negative feelings 
The Centre for Clinical Interventions by the Government of Western Australia provides documents for information purposes only on their website, which is www.cci.health.wa.gov.au, has a very interesting working book which can be found under their resources titled Back from the Blues, which deals with depression. In module four of that workbook, it breaks down the ABC analysis that talks to the unhealthy and unhelpful negative thoughts and how to counter them using this method. The advice goes as follows. First, we identify the activating event, which is the A, by asking what happened, focusing just on the facts of the situation without including our thoughts about why, who and how we felt. Next, we identify the consequences, which is the C, and ensure that we include our feelings and behavior and rate the feelings and how extensive these feelings are. Then we identify our beliefs, which is the B, and our thoughts what our expectations were and what our perception was of the situation. Once this is done, we must focus on the main thought that we can directly associate with the primary emotion, the feeling itself, and rate this thought. We then ask ourselves if there are any other underlying thoughts that may be magnifying this main unhelpful thought. The automatic negative thoughts may be uncovered through asking ourselves some questions such as what is this thought? Why do we have this thought? Why is this thought bad? What is bad about this thought? And exactly what this thought says about ourselves. The underlying thoughts may be the culprit and we have to focus on them too while doing this exercise. With practice, we will get to a level of mastering our thoughts, enabling us to tackle the main issue instead of the incident that happened. Once we have a hand on the unhelpful thought, we can start the management process of our feelings and our moods. The most important takeaway for me from this is that these negative thoughts may lead to avoidance and many unhelpful behaviors towards ourselves and others around us and hinder us from solving the actual problems that can actually be fixed. Our mental state contributes immensely to our long-term physical well-being, psychological well-being and spiritual well-being. So let us take this first step by implementing the ABC analysis and learn to better manage our moods and feel better. I have downloaded these workbooks as advised by my psychologist and hope to continue using this tool as one of the many I am learning as I go on this journey toward finding serenity or some peace of mind. Thank you for your time, your support, and being with me on this journey to finding serenity. If you enjoy listening to me, please subscribe and let your friends, your family and your tribe know that they can also join me on this journey. Until I see you next time, stay well and may your higher power shower you with blessings and keep you safe today. Let us be diligent with the work required to achieve our goals and hopefully experience serenity and peace of mind. The answers are always right in front of us and will be revealed if we truly seek them. Let us be present, conscious and intentional in our lives and grow positively to achieve the happiness we truly seek. To Me's Daily Grind is a presentation purely based on my experiences, the inspiration I have found from others, the learnings I have been taught throughout various periods of my life. This show is not representative of any group, organization, religious or spiritual beliefs, 
or any sobriety programs. My goal is to open up a conversation about some things that have been difficult for me to talk about and to purely encourage others to be open-minded to the tools that may be or are freely available. On this program, I talk about recovery, spiritual growth, mental health issues, sobriety, relapses, and spiritual well-being, focusing mainly on the daily work, the grind, that goes into finding peace of mind, contentment, freedom from addiction, life's hardships, daily spiritual and mental struggles. I hope that together we can find solutions, inspiration and motivation on living healthy, present, sober and clean while we travel together on this journey toward finding enlightenment or at least some peace of mind. Goodbye from me, Dumi. Lots of love.